Hi, my name is Bill Laboon. I'm the Technical Education Lead at the Web3 Foundation here in Zug, Switzerland. And today I want to talk to you about why you should be a validator on the Polkadot or Kusama networks. So before we get into what a validator does, I think it really makes sense to go back to the foundations of what a blockchain is. So a blockchain is just a collection of blocks and each block uh, consists of a group of data. Now this data could be transactions, uh, that means you're just sending uh, tokens from one account to another, it could be something more complicated, but these all are just data in chunks that are produced and generated one after another so that there is a specific ordering there is. So somebody has to actually produce these blocks. We can't just trust anybody to throw some data on the system. In a classical blockchain that uses something called proof of work, this is something like Bitcoin or Ethereum, in order to produce a block, you really have to win a lottery. So you can buy a lottery ticket by using some of your electricity to run your computer and run some calculations and see if you've won the lottery. And anybody who is lucky enough to get the right answer will be able to produce another block. Now this prevents people from trying to cheat because producing a block is going to take a lot of energy. They've got skin in the game. They're not going to want to try to break the system because they just spent a lot of time trying to produce a valid block. If it's invalid, they've just wasted a lot of time and everybody will ignore them. However, a downside of this approach is that it takes an awful lot of electricity. To run Bitcoin, for instance, it uses more electricity than Switzerland. So there is another kind of system, the kind that Polkadot and Kusama use, which is proof of stake. So in proof of stake, instead of putting skin in the game in a physical way by using real world electricity, you can buy the ability to produce blocks by leaving a big enough deposit. So I think this uh, is going to take a little bit of time to explain, but again, I think it's worth it to understand what a validator is doing. If we think of building a blockchain as building a house, if you are going to, say, have somebody add a kitchen onto your house, you may be concerned that the person who is building your kitchen uh, may just leave with the money or uh, try to break uh, some windows while they're there or steal something from you. So you may ask for them to leave a deposit. So the homeowner says, if you give me a thousand dollars, I'll pay you two hundred dollars to fix the, fix the kitchen, but or you know, add on on the kitchen. But if you do anything bad, well, I'm going to take that thousand dollars you left as a deposit. So we can see here now the, the interest of the builder is to actually build the kitchen because they're worried that there's a thousand dollars that they could be losing. Now, if there's some other builder who says, I'll fix your kitchen for two hundred dollars, but I'll only leave a five dollar deposit with you. Well, they're not going to be quite as trustworthy as the person who, the, the worker who said that they would deposit a thousand dollars with you. They're showing that they have more to lose. Again, in a proof of work system, this more to lose is physical. It's the electricity that is used to uh, produce the blocks. But in a proof of stake system, it can be done much more efficiently by leaving everything on chain. That is, making sure it's all in the system. There's nothing external. We're not using up any extra electricity. So as a validator, you are going to be like one of these workers. You have to get a large enough deposit to be part of the what's called the active validator set, the people that are actually producing blocks. There are only a set number 
of validators that can be actively producing blocks at a time. So this number is variable. Our current network, Kusama, started at 50 but is now at 180. Uh, and there are benefits and drawbacks to having a lar smaller or larger number of validators. And people are competing to be validators because if you validate, you will get rewards. However, just so just like our worker in the previous example, if you produce blocks and everybody agrees on the network that you did a good job and didn't cheat and didn't break anything, then you'll get rewarded for building the kitchen or building the blocks. Conversely, if you try to break the network by uh, sending you know, invalid data or the equivalent of you know, stealing things from the person's house or just not showing up to fix the kitchen at all, then you will uh, be what's called slashed. Some of your deposit will be taken away. Now, all of these validators are going to be competing to be active, active validators. They want to actually produce blocks so they get rewarded. And the way we choose those who are most likely to be rewarded, uh, those who are least likely to cheat, is by seeing who can get the largest amount of backing. So just like in our example where we would trust somebody who would give us a $1,000 deposit more than somebody who would give us a $5 deposit, uh, if you are able to get the most backing, either your own or have others uh, speak for you and provide their own uh, deposits, like imagine this as individual workers that are coming, they can also add uh, to your deposit. They know they'll get paid and uh, they'll leave a deposit so they, they can get paid. Whoever has the most backing, the top 180, will be able to produce blocks. So now that we've determined what a validator is and what exactly they're doing, why might you want to validate? Well, the first reason is that even if you're not selected to be an active validator, you are still helping with the, helping the network. You're showing that there are uh, people that are trying to be validators, and if they're, you're, you're also acting as sort of uh, uh, the second string uh, in, in a football game, right? If the, there's a problem where many of the current validators uh, have to, to leave the network for some reason, perhaps there's a very large uh, failure in the, uh, in the, in the internet where a lot of people are offline, you're ready to step up, you know, you're, you're the backup and now you're ready to step up and actually be a validator. Uh, so even if you don't originally get in the active validator set, it doesn't mean that you never will be. Uh, you get to learn how validation works, which is also something that is uh, very, very important and uh, very useful. Of course, the big reason that people would validate is probably because they want to get block rewards. So what this, what block rewards are is the equivalent of your salary. So you fix a kitchen or you build a block and you are given some tokens as a reward for that. So the amount of tokens actually that you'll get, the amount of block rewards actually varies. Uh, so it's hard to say exactly how much you'll get but you will get uh, uh, some rewards. If there are fewer validators working and people aren't putting as much uh, what we call stake, enough, a large enough deposit, you'll actually be rewarded much more uh, than if you have a lot of people uh, validate, uh, validating and a lot of you know, large amounts of deposit uh, behind it. Right now, uh, this can give you anywhere from 10 to 20% of uh, your, your, your staked amount of your deposit uh, yearly. So that's a pretty significant block reward for uh, being a validator on the, uh, on the Polkadot and Kusama networks. But of course, with great power comes great responsibility. So you can also be slashed. That is, some of your deposits can be taken away from you. This can happen if you are offline for a long period of time, or although that would be a very minor penalty, just like you know, if you don't show up for work for one day, then you may, uh, if a worker doesn't show up one day, 
then they may get, uh, you know, they won't get paid for that day, but they're not really seen as, as too much of a problem. But if a worker comes and steals uh, the safe from the room, from the owner's bedroom, then they're going to lose their much, much more of their deposit. So you are risking some of your funds by being a validator for the chance of greater rewards. Uh, and this applies to nominators as well. So I'll talk more about nominators in another, uh, another talk, but we can think of these as the workers, the people that don't want to run a construction business, but do want to be involved and get rewards. And uh, we'll see that we can have people back you without actually running a validator. And this may also be something that you're uh, in interested in uh, doing. So why not validate? Well, there are some reasons not to do it. First off, it's work. You do have to maintain your node. You need to make sure that it's upgraded to the correct version of the software. You need to make sure that it has very high availability. You need to worry more about hackers who may try to take you offline. And of course, as I've already mentioned, it's risky. When your funds are staked, they can be liable to slashing. That means you can lose some of your funds, especially if you do something malicious. So hopefully this whet your appetite a little bit and you thought, think that you might want to run a validator, uh, but you may think that you don't have enough funds to get in the active validator set. So as I've already mentioned, you also can be a nominator. Again, think of this as like a worker as opposed to the owner of a construction company. You're, help, you're going to help other validators build blocks uh, without actually building them yourself. Uh, or you can join our 1000 validators program. And in the 1000 validators program, you will get technical assistance from the Web3 Foundation and uh, Parity. Uh, Tech, excuse me, Parity Technologies, to help you become an active validator. So not only will this include uh, technical assistance and reviewing of your setup, but also providing you with nomination funds so that you actually can be a part of the active validator set, even if you don't have enough on your own. And in return, you are monitored and you're given feedback on your on your, your validator and how well it's doing. So hopefully that this has made you very interested in being a validator. Uh, if uh, not, again, you can also think about being a nominator. And I will talk about that in another talk about this. Thanks.